Like I, I told I, I, I if you because Kevin, I mean this Kevin had been going to church for like ages. I known this guy for like three years, three or four years at this point, and like he was there every Friday, right? And for him to say that I don't think I'm Christian, like just blew my mind, mm. right? And um, shame on me for not like I don't know. It's like when you're like it's like if someone shows up every day and they're like in church and service, you don't you don't really think to yourself. I don't know. It's like I, I don't know, Adrian. Are you Christian? Like I've I've never I don't I don't have I haven't had to ask that question. I just presume certain things. Yep. So 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 yep. um so I think God had it on His heart, and I was um um available, and you know. And I'm just kind of like blessed to have been like used in that in that way by the Spirit. Mm. So good, That's an awesome yeah. testimony. Mm-hmm. I got I need a fresh story though. It's a little bit dusty. It's kind of uh, it's why my <laughs> pastor says like you know some of my some of my faith story is a little bit dusty. <laughs> like, I think like, I, need, I need some fresher ones. So uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, isn't that the way? Like I think you know. Right on. Like, I mean, never will will devalue it. You know, time doesn't devalue what, what food has been, you know, in your life in that way. But it does make you, yeah, go, well, am I like that today? Am I as available now as I was then? Or is there anything, you know, kind of like cluttering my world that I don't have time or space to hear or to know, hear that prompting um, and, and follow it? I think... Um, oh. <clears throat> or another thought on that, Deb, as well, is that, um, like, I think often we, we talk about, we know that we're different from when we were in our in our heydays of having lots of time and, you know, um, availability, right? <clears throat> but but what is it that, that God is putting and laying on your heart now that is so, you know, it, it's, it's there's a word there or, so, for example, that word duplication is something that's, it's laid on my heart. It's, it's, it's in every frame of mm-hmm. things. And I think about at the moment. So I was like, and how did that duplicate? And how do you, you know, Danny, do you want to do this, do this again and again? So I feel like there's an individual answer there that the spirit may be laying on you, Kinson mm-hmm. or Deb or AIDS, something that, that you need to be intentional about, you know? Um, and it could be one other person who's going to help you identify another friend in your life, um, in Kinson's life, or, but it could be as equally something to do with his kids or, you know, <clears throat> um, or it could be a value that, that, and that's why you're doing these podcasts because you're seeing something that's necessary out there. Or, um, yeah, I, I feel like mm-hmm. even some of the stuff that you shared, Deb, it's, there's a take on it, which is the forefront idea. Um, you know, I want to take ground, and that's very characteristic of you, Deb. Like, you don't want to be swept up and taken down the tide, you know? You're going to go, hang on, stop, mm-hmm. stop, stop, stand back up. Which direction do you want to go? Start swimming that way, you know? Uh, and, it's, mm. and it's necessary that you do this, not just for you, but for the impact of all those around you, that you may lead in this time of where people are kind of getting a bit distressed or un, unsure. Mm. You know, it takes someone to stand up and people to stand up and start going, hang on, look, we're going to put some stakes in the ground. Uh, I want to be one of those, you know? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so, yeah, I think the question of what's, the, what's God laying on your heart to be intentional about? Um, in your, what's your day-to-day frames that, that that might go through your head? And just to just to add to that as well, like with um, your story, Kinson, <coughs> and all of um, these examples, I think it is this not just intentionality to try and just in our own strength, you know, change the world mm-hmm. and, and trying mm-hmm. to know every situation. It really always is this partnership with the Holy Spirit and um, mm-hmm. what He lays on your heart. Like you said, Danny, Amen. this word is really taking root in you and you know holy spirit's fleshing that with you for you kinson it was this moment where you had a choice and you followed that prompting and i think um you know, i really don't want you know don't want this to be a burden in the sense of, okay we've got to be intentional we've got to you know um you know pull our socks mm-hmm. up and, and, and try to how to change things it's really no it's this beautiful flow of kind of um of just being available isn't it kinson like you know like available to God and making space I always ask my kids and you know just in terms of how do you make space for the Holy Spirit in your every day and for me it's kind of like how do you wake up in the morning what's the first thing that you think about Uh, what's the first thing that you do and for me I'm kind of like always trying to go okay Holy Spirit 
tell me what to do or good morning holy spirit you know and and just have this constant dialogue and in your when you're bored like i think about kids these days like when they get bored or they don't have a screen or a device teaching them to you know when they when they get that moment of space not just to go to fill it with a device or fill it with entertainment but to go holy spirit talk to me or holy spirit what should i do you know and it's just these these little things that i think <coughs> um actually are where god actually intervenes in our lives but um Kinson, you had something to share as well about that this intentionality and mindfulness. Yeah, this, um, I mean, one thing, um, so there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's, there's this um, management consultant, uh, his name is Peter Trucker, and he has this, he has this kind of saying, it's called, um, what, gets, what gets measured gets managed. Right. Hmm. And uh, it's it's kind of like a classic, like it's like oh if you if you measure things in this business context, you know you 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 have a tendency to manage it. Um, but what I what I kind of did in my personal life was I um, I don't do it all the time, but I, I did do it briefly, where I I actually just measured the the moments that I would have with my children. Right, so so it was it was like times I read um, books to my son, you know, two times. Um, times that I got a hug from my um, from my daughter. Um, times that she held my hand. Times that she rejected holding my hand, holding my hand. Um, and through that process, because I was I was being very mindful of that moment it actually it actually made me realize and led to a a deeper um presentness that makes if that word makes sense right and, and i think it's like i think the, the way to define it is when we're not present we're thinking about something else right we're thinking about the next thing that we have to do we're thinking about like the 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 next call the 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 next thing like we're we're not present in the moment uh and i think that is i think that's very helpful it's a useful tool to um to be intentional because otherwise you know to your point right it's it's so easy just you pick up your device and you you do some scrolling you do some texting and then you check your mail and you check another app uh and whatnot and then you you want to do this you want to do that it's like oh that then you reminded it's then it's like i mean these devices have been designed to to suck up your attention mm -hmm. right and so so how we combat that has to be like a thoughtful mm -hmm. like intentional process um yeah. you know i don't think we can i don't think we can fight it uh accidentally unless you accidentally lose your phone um, <laughs> <laughs> which is one way yeah right? one way to do like, you should have seen my you should have seen louise she left her phone here at home mm -hmm. and she, like she she didn't know what to do with her stuff you could just see her, <laughs> i could see her fidgeting i'm like it's okay this is i'm like nobody's like like if anybody's gonna call you they'll just you just talk to them later. Like, I don't, there's, there's no, there's no emergencies. You're not, you're not a healthcare professional where somebody's about to die if they don't. Like, you're gonna be fine. Um, but you can, you could see that it was, um, you know, it was clearly mm -hmm. uncomfortable for her. I actually ended up. We were in Chatswood. I ended up driving her back to pick up the phone so she can go back to Chatswood uh, <laughs> and whatnot. So. That's what we're. That's where we're kind of like battling, um, mm -hmm. as as believers, right? Yeah, yeah. No, so true, Kinson. Um, yeah, I think you know if it was ever a desire, like or something to challenge Christians, it's this um, mindfulness um, and intentionality go hand in hand, don't they? Like, um, and yeah, the mindfulness in the everyday. So that you can know the opportunities when they present themselves to be intentional or to 
but to create change or to do something, you know, on purpose that is a little bit out of the ordinary and or not just, you know, doing what you always do. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Danny, um, you have any last things to say because we've probably got to wrap it up in a couple of minutes. Mm. I think that the um, a framing thought for me, even in this idea of like be, <coughs> be fragrant, like, you know, what are other words for intentional? Like being, being deliberate, being fragrant, <coughs> um, having the eyes of, of Jesus, you know, in the world, um, trying to think about the works that God has pre-prepared for us to do. And, and all of it is that whole thing of, it's actually this whole proactiveness, a very proactive, very much a, um, I think even as Kinson was saying, sometimes it's doing what's un uncomfortable. It's, you know, the norm is to go seek comfort, but it may not be. And yeah, I, I think that um, the heart behind it, when I think about it, is when I have this desire to be fragrant, I'm in love with Jesus, I want him to be magnified. I want, I'm, I'm conscious this day is, is for him. And then I'm also conscious of the days where life is beating me down and my my life's about surviving the day, you know, like it's about getting through. And I thought that's human. That's okay. You know, it's it's part of part of also part of our journey as Christians, you know, we've got to work through those moments equally. Um, but just this yeah, that word intentional, it's it's so in um it's so inextricably linked, inextricably linked to this third circle of how we get out there and be impactful, you know, and it's tr and what we're also saying is don't define it, don't don't narrow it, um, be open to the Holy Spirit's leading it. Um, we would love to hear people's stories. Like Kinson, I, I love your stories. I told you we got to have a beer if it's a no alcohol show. Uh, uh, what did you like, ginger ale? Ginger ale or something like that. But but a steak. Yeah, I, I need ginger beer. Just my uh, stories. Ginger beer. My forty year old stomach can no longer take alcohol. <laughs> okay, ginger beer, a steak, and lots of stories. And to Deb's point, like as we trade stories, I'm inspired, and I go, man, I'm going to go out and do something with that. You know, um, I value you guys. Like I value this time, this chatting. I value all the other guys that get on in and around us as well, because. Um, it's maybe not that normal for people to be later in life or middle mid stage of life in our middle wicket to be going, I'm only revving up to crack on, you know, we're revving up to crack on for Jesus, mate, wanting to be impactful. Now we're kind of looking upwards. Who can we encourage? And we're looking, who can, who can we help that, that are following us? It's this really interesting age, this middle wicket, mm. middle earth. We're in middle earth. <laughs> <laughs> so true, Danny. Um, but hey, uh, we've got one more week before we um, close up this series. Hey, very exciting! Um, mm -hmm. First time, first um, crack at it, which has been awesome. But um, the last, yeah, mm -hmm. like next week, um, I think the word that we're going to be unpacking is alignment. Mm -hmm. And you know, in this third circle of this, you know, how do we actually align? The um, aspects and the passions, the the gifting, the you know, um, yeah, what what we're good at and what we actually are passionate about in life. Um, so yeah, it's a good one. Mm. I don't know mm. where to but mm. maybe this is something that Adrian mm. really delved into <coughs> a mm. while ago. Um, it's a Japanese mm. concept. Look it up, ikigai, I K I G A I, um, mm. in preparation for next week but um yeah we can have a talk about that even with that i reckon we might do some reading which is the parable of the talents so good all right it's dinner time thanks guys thanks see ya. Kinson, and Kinson, thanks see ya. bye take care guys bye, see you guys next bye. week okay